Today I want to talk about joy and the importance of actively opening ourselves to joy, even in and especially in troubled times. Opening ourselves to joy. In so many ways in troubled times, many of us close ourselves off to joy. Worry, being busy, fears of what could happen, these can all take over our minds and become our focus. Sometimes an experience treats us to unexpected joy, even when we're consumed with those fears and anxiety. But we're far more likely to miss some of the more ordinary joys around us if we're not intentionally open to them. The author Herman Hesse suggested that we not under overlook those little joys. Even a section of sky, it doesn't have to be a blue sky because the sun is still making itself felt on cloudy days. His words reminded me of a trip that I took many years ago, a week before the summer solstice. Um, I had already been in Scandinavia for a week, experiencing waking up to the birds chirping and the morning sun at 3 a.m. and the sun going down, it seemed, not long before midnight. I took a short trip within that trip to spend two partial days and the night between them above the Arctic Circle. I was expecting the joy of the midnight sun gleaming over the countryside. Bill, could you turn the volume down? I was expecting the joy of the midnight sun gleaming over the countryside. And to be honest, I was expecting some warm and beautiful summer weather. What I got was Fahrenheit 39 degrees and thick gray clouds for the whole night. No, I did not manage to see any reindeer herd either. <laughs> I really had to reach for some joy. There was still enough light outside on that midsummer night to read a book outside, though it was a bit too cold to sit there. Uh, no northern lights, those are more often visible in the long winter nights. And really, there was not much of a sun, although you could tell it was there, glowing behind the clouds, creating almost a mystical atmosphere. So amidst my disappointment, I had to really reach to get the joy that I had hoped to find in that little adventure. Enjoying the look of a little Stave church, an ornate and fairly antique wooden structure, the visit to one of the co largest copper mines in the world, a smorgasbord feast. Really, there was a lot of joy, just not what I expected. The author Hesse goes on to suggest one way to open yourself to joy. He writes, accustom yourself every morning to look for a moment at the sky and suddenly you will be aware of the air around you, the scent of morning freshness that is bestowed on you between sleep and labor. You will find every day that the gable of every house has its own particular look, its own special lighting. Pay it some heed, if you will, if you will have for the rest of the day a remnant of satisfaction and a touch of coexistence with nature. Gradually and without effort, the eye trains itself to transmit many small de delights, to contemplate nature and the city streets, to appreciate the inexhaustible fun of daily life. From there on to the fully trained artistic eye is the smaller half of the journey. The principal thing is the beginning, the opening of the eyes. That's Herman Hesse. The joy of both nature and city streets. I have a view outside my living room window of Broadway. And at night, all the lights that remind me there, it's almost like having Christmas lights all year round. I could easily sit and stare at them, just enjoying the colors and brightness against the dark. And I could also enjoy a walk in a peaceful forest. The joy of being there with the very low sounds and hear the birds 
and the rustling of leaves. Both nature and city streets are occasions for joy, if we're open to receiving that joy. About five years ago, a blogger who was a native of Romania named Luminita Saviuc shared a small piece she'd written on Facebook. She called it 15 things you should give up to be happy. It was shared by more than 1.5 million people. Definitely something that people wanted to hear and to have others hear. So last month we talked a lot about the power of stories and part of her message in that blog post was that the story of your past doesn't have to become the story of your the rest of your life. So her first suggestion was to give up the past. We can't remake the past. The second was to give up your fears. That is, don't give in to them. Another was to give up your excuses. Risk living without relying on them. Another was to give up resistance to change. We're in a world which is going to constantly change around us and we have to change with it. She also suggested we give up blaming. Another one that takes a lot of learning to be able to do. Give up trying to live up to someone else's expectations. Give up the idea that you have to be in control. This is another way of saying give up resistance to change. Give up the need to always be right. And she had a few more. Well, I could build my own list. One of the top ones for me would be to give up the idea of deserving. I deserve to get that bright midnight sun for the investment of time and money. Well, no, the universe didn't owe me anything. There's a huge release in giving up the concept of deserving. As long as you focus on what you deserve and don't get, it's hard to be open to the joy that is there that is unexpected. Yes, we get a lot of pain and unfairness in life that we don't deserve, but we also get a lot of joy that we didn't deserve. It's the other side of giving up blame. If we get something wonderful only because we deserved it, I think that actually diminishes the joy in it. Another top one for me to give up would be to give up cynicism. Oscar Wilde defined a cynic as someone who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. And George Carlin, the famous wise man said, scratch any cynic and you will find a disappointed idealist. You know, the whole idea of idealism is that you picture an ideal future and the world will never be ideal. You'll always be disappointed. A cynic uses that disappointment as a reason to close down. A more rational and compassionate idealism remains open to possibility and takes disappointment as an opportunity to learn, rethink, plan again, and try a different way to get closer to the ideal. Cynicism tends to blind people, not only to opportunities, but to joy. And joy helps us deal with our tendency, especially in troubled times, to become cynics and to give up on change. Edith Wharton in another time and place wrote in a novel these words, why do we call all our generous ideas illusions and the mean ones truths? I have recently enjoyed reading several authors who draw from the black feminist experience the idea that in fact joy is essential to idealism and to the task of organizing against oppressions. Adrienne Marie Brown, who I've quoted often before, has written an, an entire book called Pleasure Activism, The Politics of Feeling Good. She writes, oppression makes us believe that pleasure is not something that we all have equal access to. One of the ways that we start doing the work of reclaiming our full selves, 
our whole liberated free selves is by reclaiming our access to pleasure. She continues, as a black woman in this country, I have to walk around every day knowing that had I been born at a different time in this country's history, it would have been a policy, a part of the law, that I could be raised for the pleasure of whoever owned me at the time. I'm trying to come back all the way back from that to living in my own dignity and the self-actualization of my own pleasure, my own body, not for someone else to use, but for someone else, not for someone else to have ownership of. Well, here's what I think. There's still a lot of the stereotypical Puritanism in our society, which tries to teach us that pleasure and joy are bad things. That when we organize for a better world, we'd better be completely serious about it. Taking breaks, taking care of yourself, having moments of joy, those are distractions. If we only worked harder and were more busy, we might win our battles. But actually, it is the joy in life that helps remind us, first, that we are alive, and that helps us heal the wounds from the oppressions and traumas of our world. When I asked you earlier to think of the five joys, or later to name something that gives you joy, didn't you feel a bit of body sense with that memory? Can you actually feel the healing power of joy? Scientific studies tell us that the bad things in life, that is, those things that we find hurtful to ourselves and others, um, those things are felt more strongly in our minds than the good things in life are. Um, and by good things, I mean those that bring us joy and peace and comfort. It takes something like five of those good things to offset one bad thing. Marriages, for instance, are likely to last, research shows, if the individuals share about five times as many positive communications as they share criticisms, anger, or other negative communications. Well, one implication of that we really have to pay attention to finding more joy. The more we are concerned, even fearful, the more we are concerned or even fearful, the more we need joy. Being fearful is not really empowering, except to make immediate moves to avoid a present danger. To do the long-term work to remove systemic dangers, that requires energy and thought and fear gets in the way of thoughtful energy. Anxiety, that is, those times when the fear becomes self-reinforcing and we're actually afraid of the fear, that also keeps us from the energy and thoughtfulness we need to address those underlying causes of the problems in our lives or in the world. So we need to open to pleasure and joy to recharge ourselves. Even more importantly, I think, those moments of joy remind us of the world we want, the relationships we want. They are like windows into a better future. What if everyone, including ourselves, had more and more opportunities for joy? Being the change we want to see in the world also means experiencing joy. And the more terrifying the world is, the more important it is to be open to those moments of joy. And so, especially when we're worried about the world going to hell in a handbasket, when we are terrified of the violence and the tendency towards authoritarianism that we see in the news, it's important to open ourselves to moments of joy. Seek those out, not because we deserve them, but because we need them. Austin Channing Brown writes, Black girls and black women alike have our joy misconstrued as disrespectful, arrogant, arrogant, or perpetually inappropriate. Our joy is suspicious. And what right have we to joy when we have so much work to do? 
we aren't just pursuing racial justice when we are organizing or voting or protesting or speech making or volunteering. We are also pursuing justice when we indulge in joy. And again from Adrienne Marie Brown, feeling good is not frivolous, it is freedom. Joy reminds us of the world that could be. Joy can align us with our ideals and help us keep our commitment to them. Whether they're for a better relationship, a better friendship, a better community, a better world. And isn't part of that ideal a world, a relationship, where there is more joy? And cynicism gets in the way of joy. And joy can get in the way of cynicism. So open yourself to joy. Perhaps by, as Hesse suggests, every morning looking for the light of day. Take some moments to really relish that light and let it sink in. Perhaps taking time to remember some joyful time and then relishing that memory, really helping it sink in. Perhaps it's looking at yourself in the mirror and instead of finding everything that's wrong and that you're unhappy with, noting what you really enjoy about yourself, your face, your body, it is, after all, what gives you life. And then taking some time to relish that. Let it fully sink in. And perhaps as you go about your normal activities, walking on city streets or in nature, notice what is going on around you. Not just what you fear, but what you enjoy. Or doing something for someone else, just because and then relish the joy of being of service. Joy isn't something that we deserve. It's something we and everyone else needs. It's mental and ethical sustenance. It is a reminder of the ideals that cynicism wants to tell us aren't really worth it anyway. Joy is freedom. Or as the author Mark Nepo writes, Joy is the transformation of our suffering, not the escape of all we have to face. In other words, joy is what powers us to face what needs to be faced and reminds us of why we deeply in our hearts and minds want to continue to face it. Resist that which says we don't deserve it or can't find it and pers purposely, intentionally, open to finding the big and little joys of life. So we're, we'll say goodbye now to those who are watching this later on video. And you can find out more about us at rysec.org. Please join us some Sunday live in, June, in Zoom or in person.